Okay, so you've gone through the first five Fast Start modules and you've learned some new concepts. The next four modules you'll be uh, watching weekly. You'll be watching them one per week. And this first four are going to be focused on the inner game of personal productivity. And we're going to be focusing on some inner game high leverage methods and formulas and techniques. And we're going to be starting with your personal success ritual. Okay, your personal success ritual. And uh, I want to introduce you to this idea here. After studying a lot of masters and talking to some real experts in the area of personal development, of personal productivity and time and self-management, I've realized that we have an area of leverage in our lives that's huge, very high leverage. We can get incredible success out of it, but we don't even know that it's there. So in the last session, we talked about the idea that your rarest and most valuable state is awareness and your rarest and most valuable form of energy is willpower. Well, there's actually another kind of rare form that we get, and that's the, the action, the rare and valuable action. And uh, I think of the rarest and most valuable action as intentional repetition. Intentional repetition. So why is that the rarest and most valuable form of action. Because most of the things that we do are unconscious, right? They're patterns that were laid down in our mind, emotions, and bodies, a lot of them back when we were children, and the buttons are just being pushed, and uh, we're just flying off. And uh, we'll talk in later uh, sessions here about how to deal with those issues, but for now, I want to talk about this rare and valuable form of action called intentional repetition. And what I like to do is get a lot of leverage. All right, again, with the long lever and, you know, move the earth. Because uh, I'm not lazy, but I certainly like to get the most possible reward I can for the effort that I'm putting in. All right, if I'm going to show up and I'm going to work hard and I'm going to roll up my sleeves and get the job done, I want to get the highest return that I possibly can. And I think that this technique will help you to get very, very high leverage on your intentional action. And uh, here's the philosophy. Oprah Winfrey. Okay, she, uh, she wrote a book about health and fitness with her personal trainer several years ago. And one of the things she talks about is the idea of starting every morning with exercise. And uh, she talks about that kind of stoking the fire inside. And uh, it just so happens that I know a gentleman named Bill Phillips who uh, wrote a book called Body for Life, um, number one selling fitness book in history, I believe. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was fortunate enough to have lunch with him. And I was talking to him and I said, you know, Bill, when it comes to this, you know, fitness thing, what are, the, uh, what are the keys? What are the secrets? And he gave me a few of them. And I want to talk about one of the things that he told me, and it's about the meals. And he said, uh, in terms of eating, your first meal is the key meal of the day. And I said, why is that? And he said, because the first meal sets the context for all the rest of the meals. So if I eat a meal in the morning and it's a, a good, healthy, balanced meal, the next meal I have, I'm going to want to have another good, balanced, health, healthy meal because I started a good day and I want to keep the good day going. Whereas if I cheat on my first meal and I eat some junk, when it comes to the second meal, I'm going to just say, ah, I already cheated today, so today's blown. I'm just going to have some more junk food and I'll get back on track tomorrow. So the first one is so important. So Oprah says that you, know, you want to start off with the exercise to stoke your fire right, and start off healthy physically. Bill Phillips says you want to start off with the, you know, the first meal. What we're talking about here is setting the context for the day, setting the frame around which you judge everything else. So I think that the first things you do in the day are the highest leverage things. And your personal success ritual, okay, the inner game of personal success and uh, of personal management and of personal productivity, your first ritual that you do, do during the day is the highest leverage ritual by far because it has this effect of setting your mind and setting the context for the rest of the day. If you set the context for the day right, you're going to live a great day. If you live a great day, it's going to set the context and you're going to live a great week. If you set the week well, you're going to live a great month. You live a great month, you'll live a great year, and you live a great year and you can live a great rest of your life. Whereas when you cheat early on, it screws up the rest of the day, it screws up the rest of the week, it screws up the rest of the month. It's a spiral. It either spirals upward or it spirals downward. So when you first wake up and you're rested 
and you know you feel like you've got a little bit of awareness you've got a little altitude on life it's really important to take some of that awareness and that willpower and focus it on your personal success ritual I call mine my morning ritual why because I know that if I do my ritual in the morning if I do my success ritual in the morning it's gonna set me up for a great day by the way I want to give some credit where credit is due and I want to thank Tony Schwartz um, the author of the power of full engagement for introducing me to the word ritual okay I was familiar with the concept of routine and habit and how imp important these things are but Tony really uh, took this idea to the next level and he said call the important routines call them rituals and what I've realized is that if you don't have it in habit then you don't have it right so if you don't have it in your habits then you don't have it and what I mean by this is if it's not habitual if you're not doing it regularly then you don't have it and you're not doing it and if you are doing it habitually then you do have it and you do own it so we're gonna build a morning success ritual for you that you're going to go through and we're gonna focus on this for the first month we're gonna be focusing on this ritual over the next four weeks we're gonna put the foundation in place uh, in this session and then we're going to fine-tune it and we're going to tweak it and we're going to get more distinctions uh, over the next three sessions. So one of the realizations that I've had over the last several years as I've worked to become more efficient and productive in my life is that my inner game, how I feel inside, what's going on in my head, that is the highest leverage in my life. Uh, one of the things that I teach in my altitude program is that the highest leverage in existence comes from thought. It's the place where you can have a little tiny electrical impulse, tiny electrical impulse, and it can lead to a chain of thinking, which can lead to um, a plan, which can lead to action and mobilizing other people, and it can change the world, okay? The Great Pyramids started out as a thought in someone's mind. Um, computers, they started out as a thought that someone had. All of these things started off as a little tiny charge, so that's the greatest leverage is our thought. So the greatest leverage that we get comes from inside of us, and I want you to take advantage of the greatest leverage that you possibly can, and that is by creating a really powerful uh, morning personal success ritual. What I want you to do is I want you to think of the three key areas of life, the physical, the emotional, and the logical. And I want you to create a ritual that renews, refreshes, recharges, and just gets you fired up, all right? Gets you strong inside, right? If you're not strong, you can't make other people strong. So make yourself strong first thing. Now, one of the things you may have to do is you may have to start waking up a little bit earlier because uh, I think that you need to spend at least the first 90 minutes of your day, if not two hours, focused on your personal success ritual. Uh, let me tell you about my personal success ritual in the morning. First thing I do when I wake up is I drink a half liter of water very first thing before I do anything else I force myself to walk into the kitchen get my bottle of water and drink a half liter of water uh, the next thing I do is uh, I go and I brush my teeth I floss my teeth I use my funky little tongue scraper and uh, I, uh, I do my business in the bathroom get finished with that I go out and I start my exercise routine and I have about a 30 minute exercise routine that involves some stretching, some exercise, some weights, a little bit of aerobics, and uh, then I do about five or seven minutes of yoga um, to get some you know, real power exercise and stretching mixed in. So that's about 30 minutes. And, uh, and then I do some meditation and breathing. Okay, I do that for about five or 10 minutes. And uh, then I take a bath. Okay, I just happen to enjoy baths. I find that I get very creative when I have water on me, whether I'm in the shower or in the bath. And that's the, that's the basic ritual. There are actually a couple of other little finer points in there. But what I find is that when I wake up and I do my ritual, which uh, I'd say I do about, mm, you know, probably about 85 or 90 percent of the time, okay, maybe eight or nine out of ten days, I do that ritual. By the time I'm finished, I feel clear. I've kind of sorted out everything that's happened. I've gotten centered, and I'm ready for my day, and I'm ready for anything to come at me okay I don't feel like anything can really knock me off and I've had some time to kind of collect my wits and so forth now what happens when I don't do my ritual all right what happens when I um, I have to burn the midnight oil and I have to stay up really late and I only get like four hours of sleep and then I have to jump up and immediately jump into something I, I wake up okay I, I didn't get enough sleep in the first place 
I wake up, I'm a little bit disoriented. I have to immediately go, you know, get ready, take a shower, put my clothes on. I don't have time to really sort myself out, get myself centered and strong. And all day I'm in reactive mode. I'm like a pinball getting shot all around the pinball machine. And uh, while, you know, I'm, I'm okay and it doesn't happen that often. So, you know, I, I have enough strength built up from the other times, right? When I'm kind of renewing myself and doing a good job that it doesn't bug me that much, but I can really feel the difference. I'm not anywhere near as productive. And by the end of the day, I'm beat, I'm tired and I just don't feel that good. It's counterintuitive that doing exercise and burning energy at the beginning of the day would lead to, you know, having more energy throughout the day, isn't it, right? Well, what I found is that by doing this, by drinking the water, by making sure I, you know, do good hygiene, take care of my mouth and my teeth, doing some exercise, taking my bath, that kind of thing, it just really sets me up right. Now, there are a couple of other things that I didn't mention that I also do. Okay, and I'm going to throw these in just because I've had a lot of people ask me about it. And it's kind of curious and we'll get you a little extra credit here. Um, one thing that I do is I steam. And uh, what I mean by that is I uh, take one of these hot water pots that you can buy. You plug into the wall. They're 15 or 20 bucks. They heat water very quickly. And I put about uh, three quarters to a liter of water in there and I put it on. And I actually do that right when I'm drinking my water first thing. Pour the water in there, put it on. And then I go into the bathroom, uh, brush my teeth, so forth. By the time I get back out, the water is already boiled. I can put it back on, get it up to boiling temperature. I take a big glass bowl. I put a few drops of essential oils like eucalyptus and peppermint in there, pour the water and let it sit for about a minute because those oils burn off. And then I inhale steam. Also, and here's where things start getting a little weird. I, by the way, I inhale the steam for maybe just about three or four minutes just to kind of open up my lungs and uh, get, my, get my breathing going. Then I do something that's... Uh, uh, a little, little out there, but uh, my doctor actually recommended this, which was interesting. My girlfriend recommended it. Another friend of mine does this. I use a neti pot, which is this little pot where you put water in there. You put hot water and a little bit of salt, and then you, you pour it into your nose, and it actually goes in one side and out the other. I know it sounds weird. It took me like two years from when I heard about it to even try it, and then I tried it, and I said, what, what the heck have I been uh, not doing this for, right? Well, bottom line is that your nasal passages, right, as you're sleeping, they collect a lot of stuff as you're breathing. You get all dried out and you know pollen and all kind of stuff gets stuck in there. By inhaling the steam, I clear myself out using the neti pot. When I'm done, I feel like I can breathe about twice as good. It really is amazing. You might want to try that one out. And then uh, another thing that I do um, is uh, when I meditate, I just sit down and I don't do anything weird or fancy. I just close my eyes and I just focus on my breathing. And like I said, I meditate for five or 10 minutes. And uh, that isn't about doing anything uh, you know, too weird. It's more about just relaxing my mind. Um, this is another thing that I've just gotten into really seriously over the last few years. And I found that by doing that, by just relaxing my mind and focusing on my breathing, that it calms my mind down. It allows me to relax so that I can think proactively and I can get a lot clearer. At the uh, end of my meditation, I try to do a bunch of really nice, deep, deep breaths to get a lot of oxygen into my body. So that's another thing that I do. And then finally, uh, after that little uh, ritual, I have a really healthy, balanced meal. And what I found to be a healthy, balanced meal is a blueberry shake that I make where I put in organic frozen blueberries and I put in flax seeds and almond milk and uh, some you know greens mix and some protein and a few other things. And I make this balanced meal that's about 400, 500 calories. And I start my day off with that meal. So I gave you the basic framework of the morning ritual. Then I gave you some of the you know edgier kind of more out there stuff. But I find that if I spend that 90 minute period doing those things, my day is it's so strong to begin with that it's incredible. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to create your own personal success ritual, your morning ritual, and do it first thing in the morning. Make yourself strong first. Now, you may have to start getting up a little earlier because your life is such that, you know, you wake up right now and you jump right into your, your thing. And uh, you remember the chart that I showed you where you're going to have to you know, get to a, get the escape velocity because you have to escape from habit gravity. You're going to have to invoke some of that power. You're going to have to use your willpower. And I'll give you an exercise here in a moment to uh, help you do that. But bottom line, you need to plan out your personal success ritual in the morning. And uh, the keys, as far as I'm concerned, are the water first thing. Drink water when you first wake up. Your body is dehydrated. I didn't know this before. Uh, fitness experts told me this. Drink that water first thing. 
Um, little caveat here, some people like to eat something very first thing when they wake up, and I've actually lately been experimenting with this a little bit. Um, my girlfriend, it turns out, is a nutritionist, and uh, she recommended, uh, based on my blood and you know how my body responds to things, that uh, I take a little bit of uh, this kind of protein powder mix, maybe 100 calories worth, and mix it in with some water and have that first thing. And I've been experimenting with it, and it's actually interesting. So if you're really sensitive and you need to eat something when you first wake up, you might want to eat a little bit of something. So drink the water, maybe wait 10 or 15 minutes, and then eat a, you know, a small something to kind of get yourself going. Uh, then you need to get your exercise and your hygiene, right? Take care of your physical body. Tony Schwartz taught me that the single best method of emotional renewal is to increase your heart rate. So the single best method of, in, of emotional renewal is increase of heart rate. Counterintuitive, but by working your body and exercising your body, you actually exercise your emotions. Now, why do I like uh, exercising early in the day? I have found counterintuitively that exercising early gives me more energy throughout the day. Didn't know this before. In fact, if you read uh, health and fitness books, you'll read that some of them say, be careful not to exercise too late in the day because you get yourself all worked up and then you can't fall asleep. So counterintuitively, I found that exercising early in the day really does well. Quick little note on exercise. Um, I've spent you know, a fair amount of time working to get myself to exercise on a regular basis. That was a big challenge. It took me a lot of years to where you know, now I do it every day, you know, almost totally consistently every day, like I said, 85, 90% of the time. And I take days off and rest. I actually try to take uh, one day a week off from just the exercise, but I try to do the rest of the morning ritual. But uh, bottom line, in some of my research, I, uh, I looked at the word exercise and I said, what does the word exercise mean? Well, exercise actually has a couple of different connotations. One meaning of the word exercise is to use something to just use it, to exercise it, to move it. Another meaning of the word exercise is the conscious use of something. So it's like exercising a right to do something. So exercise really means using your body consciously, exercising it. Does that make sense? Most people think of exercise as hard physical stuff that you do, and that's not it at all. What it is is intentionally moving. As it turns out, the body was made to move. We are built. We are actually made and built to move. We're built to stand up and resist gravity and balance. And our muscles form when we consciously use them to resist gravity. In fact, when you're exercising, if you're using the little barbells, feel gravity as you're lifting and then let go and let gravity pull back down and become conscious of gravity. Interesting. When you exercise yourself, you move yourself, that moves your lymph around your body, all right, which helps your immune system. It moves your blood, it gets more oxygen, it opens your joints up. It just does so many good things for you, it's incredible. And I'm not talking about you know, getting on some exercise torture mach machine and sweating until you're like, <gasps> that's not what you're trying to do. You're just trying to get your heart rate up, build a little bit of strength, you start slow and you just keep working your way up. I found that you know, by just increasing a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, keep pushing my edge, I get stronger and stronger, I feel better and better, and I don't ever go through that process of, oh, I hate to exercise, or oh, it hurts a lot. You know, if you're one of those uh, no pain, no gain folks, and you like to really, you know, get into it, fine, go for it. But exercise is about intentional use of your body. It's body use. That's what it is, exercising your body. And uh, when you do that, your body balances itself. So you remember I said that your body is made to use, it's made to move, it's made to uh, be in action and in movement. Well, it turns out that the body balances itself through movement. So, you know, as an example, sit in a chair, maybe, uh, you know, you're going on a long car ride or on a plane flight. Next time you're sitting in a chair, be there for three or four or five hours and then notice what happens when you stand up. You have to get your balance, you've kind of forgotten, you're not in that state anymore, you haven't used your body in a while, right? Next, try this. Try going somewhere and going for a long walk or the next time you exercise yourself, notice how it feels right afterwards. Okay, you've been up, you've been balanced, you've been moving around. You feel more comfortable in your body. You feel more comfortable moving. You feel more balanced, right? Your, your body naturally balances itself. Most people are getting completely out of balance because they're not intentionally moving their body and exercising. So exercise is critical. It's key. 
And uh, you know, like I said, Oprah says that you got to get the fire started in the morning. Get the exercise. It's like getting the furnace going. Critical. Um, next thing um, I really recommend that you do is find a first meal that really, really works for you. A first meal that really, really works. Now I'm going to recommend that you find a meal that is as organic and as raw as possible. And I don't say that to be uh, too weird or fanatical, but uh, if you see a lot of the modern um, research and books and things that are coming out, um, they're having great uh, results. Um, you know, in everything from disease and sickness to just feeling good and uh, giving yourself energy with foods that are closer to their raw and organic state. Um, again, I'm, I'm no physician and you know, you're gonna have to check with experts on this one, but uh, this is just my opinion. But uh, they're finding that you know, organic food has much higher nutrients. So sometimes it'll have double the nutrients in the same amount of food. So earlier I mentioned that, you know, I make my little shake in the morning. Well, every ingredient in that shake was intentionally chosen for a particular purpose, right? I use blueberries, one of the very most healthy fruits or vegetables. It's like one of the ultimate superfoods. It has uh, very high uh, healing properties, helps you rebuild in your body, um, you know, clears free radicals, um, anti-cancer properties. You know, now again, I, I'm no physician. Okay, you're gonna have to check with your experts on this one. Uh, but uh, you know, this is just my opinion. But very, very, very healthy, low glycemic index. So the sugar that comes in the blueberries, it goes into your blood in a slow, sustained manner, so you don't crash. Um, protein powder, uh, and I try to use. Uh, I use a brown rice protein. I use uh, these things called hemp seeds. It's a it's a type of nut that has you know different types of healthy oil. Flax seeds ground up, which is um, you know, very healthy um, uh, omega-3, omega-6 uh, fatty acids, um, all that kind of stuff. It's just a, like a super nutrient-rich, dense meal that I have, I consume it, and for the next three hours, I am just totally on. I'm totally focused. I can walk into the rest of my day and feel great. So first thing, have some water. Do a little bit of hygiene. Take care of your mouth, your teeth, that kind of thing. Do 30 minutes of exercise. If you can, do a little bit of breathing, maybe a little meditation, and eat a great first meal. Water, exercise, great first meal. If you will do that at the beginning of every day, your personal success ritual to make yourself strong, it will set you up for a fantastic day. Okay, so here's your exercise. What I'd like you to do right now is plan out your personal success ritual. Another uh, great lesson that I learned from Tony Schwartz is that if you want to create a ritual that you actually do, you need to plan it out specifically. Now most people do not plan specifically even when they're told to. And I want to make sure that you do this. Do not watch the next session. Do not do anything else until you have mapped out and specifically planned all the steps in your ritual. And here are the things you need to plan. Number one, you need to plan what I call the on-ramp to your ritual. That's a 10 to 15 minute period that you set aside that's extra time. And you're setting aside this extra time because you, you don't know what you don't know. Okay, you're gonna wake up and you're gonna go to exercise and you're gonna go, okay, where did I put my shoes again? Or you're gonna get distracted doing something else because it's what you normally do. You're gonna need 10 or 15 minutes as the on-ramp to your ritual. So plan 10 or 15 minutes, put that down first. Next. Plan what you're going to do in the ritual. Specifically, plan it out. If you're gonna drink water when you first wake up, plan where you're gonna put the water the night before, how you're gonna remind yourself. You might have to put a visual reminder out. Um, before I got into the habit, okay, the routine, the ritual of drinking water, I used to take it and I would put it on my bathroom sink. I'd put a half liter of water right on my bathroom sink. So when I got up and I walked into the bathroom first thing in the morning, it was there and I went, oh, right, I gotta drink my water. So you may have to do that. Next, plan out the next piece, which is, you know, the exercise. And then, um, you know, the third key component is uh, your first meal. So plan out each of those things. How are you going to make sure that you do it? What are you going to put in place? That on-ramp, okay, and literally detail all of it. Write out all the steps. How are you going to make sure that you're set up to succeed in your ritual? And then finally, you need a 10 to 15 minute off-ramp as well. You need to reintegrate with your regular life. Okay, you need to re-plug into the rest of your day. 
Now this is a pretty complex ritual that I'm giving you here. Okay, the water, the exercise, and the first meal. Don't do all the fancy stuff that I said that I do. I've added those things one at a time. It's a pretty sophisticated ritual, just doing those three things. Water, 30 minutes of exercise, healthy first meal. But I want you to try doing them immediately. My friend Wyatt Woodsmall, he says, there are two keys to starting a habit. Start now and don't deviate. Okay, start now and don't deviate. So I want you to start this tomorrow. Start your personal success ritual tomorrow. Can you do it tomorrow? Yes? Good. So plan out your ritual, just like I said. Plan your on-ramp, all the specifics of the ritual and how you're going to make sure that it happens. You're going to ensure it. You're going to put stuff in your way. You might have to put the water out on your sink. You might have to put a post-it note on the refrigerator. You might have to hide something from yourself so that you don't naturally eat it. You might have to put your running shoes out you know, uh, in front so you trip over them or your exercise clothes out so that you see them immediately. Whatever you have to do to set it up, plan the whole thing out and the timing of it, and then plan your first meal. And if you will do that as your morning success ritual, your personal success ritual, I guarantee that it will change the rest of your day. Good, so do that exercise and then do your ritual tomorrow and you're gonna do it every day for the next week and then you're gonna come back to session two next week and we're going to layer on top of this and we're gonna add more distinctions and we're gonna learn more about the inner game of personal accomplishment, personal achievement, personal success and personal productivity. All right, so get to it and I'll talk to you next week.